This is the Final Percent Podcast with Greg Kimball, and I am sitting here in beautiful downtown Denver on the 35th floor overlooking a beautiful landscape with one of my very good friends, Kyle Henderson. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great. What an honor to be on the show. Huge fan. Well, first, first and foremost, thanks for coming to my birthday party. We had a good time. We did, man. We sang together, and, uh, and we've been in each other's lives for going on t- nine years now. We've Can known you- each other, known of each other. The man, the myth, the legend that is Kyle or Greg from each other's perspectives. Um, I've always had a tremendous amount of, uh, of uh, love and respect for you ever since the moment that I met you, man. And uh, you've done some pretty incredible things in your own right, man. So tell us kind of a little bit of a backstory on who is Kyle, what, what have uh, you accomplished, what are, what are some of the things you're proud of, what are maybe some of the things you're not so proud of. You bet. Um, all that good stuff, man. Yeah, well, first and foremost, what a birthday party. Yeah, and, and we what, had a good time. What a voice. We sang No Diggity, <laughs> No Doubt, and we had a great time doing it. Yeah, it was great. So you're getting older, man. Um, I'll give you a little Thanks backstory. Thanks for that. You're, you're getting older, man. I'm looking for <laughs> the gray hairs. I still don't see any. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Um, but born and raised in Colorado, I'm a byproduct of Detroit, Michigan, where my mom's from, Motor City, okay. and Northern Shout Ireland. Shout out Motown. Motown. And <laughs> my dad's from Ireland, Northern Ireland. So those two collided in Colorado, and I was... Uh, little love child slash accident, and they had three more boys and gave up trying to have a girl after having four boys. So I was the oldest of those four boys. Oh, so you're you're the big brother. That's right. (laughs) And um, watched my dad, you know, as a veterinarian, take his practice, um, you know, from nothing to something. You know, he was an employee and turned into an entrepreneur. And I watched just how nice that was for our family, and that was inspiring for me, man. Um, was, you know, involved in every major in college you can imagine. Yeah. I changed it a million times, thought I wanted to be a doctor. Okay. Fell asleep in every biology class <laughs> and um, realized I had an act for business and yeah. um, really enjoyed that. I got involved in this group called the Academy of Young Investors. Oh, cool. And um, my first time at that meeting, the president had um, some events outside of his life take place and uh, he had to step down and I literally stepped in and took over that group and started to run it and started to build my just investor sort of background and, and knowledge. Um, but started right right out of co- uh, college writing business plans and marketing plans and falling on my face over and over. Um, when everyone else was sending out resumes trying to find work, I was just meeting as many people as I could. And mm-hmm. um, I've got a wonderful wife named Mandy. I've got two kids, uh, Presley and Grayson. Presley's five. Grayson's three. Okay. And I think the one thing I want to teach them is how to be good with people. I yeah. think that's the superpower in this world because there's specialists of every type and every stripe around every corner. And I've realized go out there and um, you know make connections, make friends without agenda. Yeah. Amen right? on that. And just be a giver. And um, you know that's worked really well for me. So right out of college, I, I got involved in the private jet space. Um, hit it off with a gentleman named Josh Stewart. Okay. And he is the founder and CEO of XJet. Okay. Um, and we had started uh, just to hit it off. He heard I was writing business and marketing plans and wanted to bring, bring me on because he had this idea in his head. And we decided to start writing that plan and developing XJet's business plan and um, went to Colorado's market. And got a lot of oil and gas families, you know, behind the idea and launched. And XJet went on to become um, the number one operation of its kind in North and South America. And it's wow. traditionally top three, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so, that's, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. How old were you when you did that? Um, I right out of college, I started working at XJet when I was 21. And they're a client of mine from a consulting standpoint, but it turned into a a full-time job one, but and I don't have a life kind of a gig, but it was an executive MBA program on stor- steroids because we'd have, you know, John Paul DeGiorio and the presidents and celebrities flying in all the time. I remember one of my first days, this gal was like, gosh, the, the candy man's here, the candy man's here. And I was like, what is she talking about? <laughs> it was M&M, you know, that had just flown in. 
And, um, you know, that was XJet. I mean, to have the first lady of Mexico there and um, uh, the president of Kenya, and it was always fascinating. But I, I grew up really quick, and I, yeah. I, I was 21, 22, 23 years old um, as it was getting going. And we had, to, we had to reach out to, you know, all the wealthiest individuals um, in Colorado from, from scratch. Wow. And you learn real quick that we're all just human beings doing the best we can. So Absolutely. It doesn't matter if you work at Starbucks um, or, you know, you're, you're recycling, you know, equipment uh, you know, on the metal side or if you're a startup entrepreneur on the real estate side. We're all just people doing the best we can and we have different drives and desires. But I realized yeah. you just have to be yourself. Yeah. Um, be your authentic self, whatever that looks like. If you're we were shy. just talking about authenticity. Yeah, and it's it's uh, it's 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 being talked about a lot more, which is great. But yeah. if you're a little rough around the edges, be a little rough around the edges. If you're a little shy, um, you know, just be who you are. Yeah, and then you know, love on others without always having an agenda. Amen. Amen, man. That's that's so. What if uh, if you had three things, three things to tell someone that when they're gonna be an entrepreneur, they're gonna get into the game. They're going to work for themselves. Um, what are some of the things you wished someone would have told you sooner so that you could be just a little bit further down the road than you are today? Yeah, no, I love it. If you had to go back and talk to yourself, what would you say to yourself? That's a better question. Three things you wish you could, could have told yourself. Right. General principles. There's probably specific instances you'd like to go back and go, don't do that. But, <laughs> <laughs> right. but, but I was saying like a principle, if you said, man, Kyle, learn these three things, man, and it's just going to pay dividends so many times over. Yeah, that's a terrific question. I think just going back... It's one, um, you know, always live under your means, be skinny. You've got nothing to prove to anyone. And we've all heard, uh, you know, the phrase where you're buying stuff you don't need to impress people you don't care about at the end of the day. And it's yeah, that, it amen. comes back to that authenticity um, and just being true to yourself, not comparing yourself to anyone else's journey. You have zero control over where or when you were born. And, I mean, you've hit... Uh, you've hit the lottery being born at all. I mean, we literally live in a sci-fi movie. I mean, regardless of your, your beliefs, we're on a, a massive rock spinning around a giant fireball in the, in the middle of infinity. And yeah. when you look to the stars, it, it doesn't make any sense. Um, at the end of the day, no one knows exactly what's going on, but it makes this all so exciting. So jump in. Um, I would also say just practice ultra presence. Don't yeah. be so hard on yourself. Have fun. Um, and be, you know, like, I think it's actually good to go out and play, yeah. um, you know, I agree. get your hands dirty and recharge. I think, uh, there's so many stories of people working 80, 130 hour work weeks and everything in between, but you've got to find your story. You've really got to deep, dig deep into yourself to figure out what you're on this planet for. Um, what you're designed to be the very best at. Double down on your strengths. Yeah. Right? And um, really focus on just jumping in the river, going with the flow, and embracing everything that comes your way. I, we've all heard the, the book Loving What Is. Mm -hmm. So many great books out there. I know you and I both just can't read enough. That's true. We, 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 we trade many titles. I, I actually, based on your recommendation, just went through Man's Search for Meaning. Yes. And it's, that's a powerful piece of literature i think literally everyone should go through yeah well, i wasn't prepared for everything that book had to offer that's a deep one i'm so happy you enjoyed it man i, I will say um you know the, the cool thing about just the fact that we're all on this planet right and mm -hmm. we're all brothers and sisters um you know i always think you know there's people may have worldly dreams or desires which is fine nothing against that um, but imagine if you had a mega yacht and a bunch of private jets and Ferraris and everything else, but there was not a single person on this planet to share it with. We're relational beings. And I think there's something really cool about just, you know, being vulnerable, being mm -hmm. open, because you're actually creating relatability and closeness between you and others as, as opposed to the opposite, which is distance. And, mm -hmm. you know, in our XJet days, we used to host events, and they still do, um, for nonprofits, YPO, CXO type events. Mm -hmm. and, 
started building my network out and um, mm -hmm. wanted to invest in uh, commercial real estate and got introduced to uh, Brian Watson, mm -hmm. who I understand is going to be on the show as well. Yeah. So Brian. Great guy. Yeah. Brian's exceptional. I've been working with him for over 10 years now, and we started a for-profit and a non-profit together, Excel Companies, and then the Opportunity, Opportunity Coalition. Nice. Um, and now we're um, staying on top of all things North Star. So North yeah. Star Commercial Partners, we've got um, $1.3 in assets under management, very diversified commercial real estate group. Uh, we've got a few funds, and we're focused heavily on data center development and other things like that. So I think one of the reason I bring that up is we're still a relational business first and foremost. Yeah. So everything we do is relational. Yeah. We're constantly getting people together and you know having their sh share their raw authentic stories amongst one another without agenda. So yeah. we'll get a ton of people together over lunch as you've experienced. Yeah, it's a great time. Great. And everyone gets to share what they're working on professionally, what they're passionate about philanthropically. And we are not selling anything in a big pitch at the end. It's, it's just magic when the connections happen amongst one another. Yeah. And we simply ask that, hey, when you come again, let's all keep on mixing it up and bringing more people, yeah. to expand the, the sphere of influence. But everything we do is relational, and we've been involved in politics, philanthropy, and, and certainly business. Um, but it comes to just slowing down, you know, being present, yeah. learning how to protect your time and mm. say no. Everyone, you know, I used to go to every event on the planet, yeah. and you certainly have to... Um, get out there and meet as many people as you can. But you also yeah. have to understand that most of the magic in life comes from such a small percentage of your efforts. It's it, there's magic moments. And if you can laser in on that, yeah, you're so much more effective and you'll have so much more time and balance. Um, and you know, it's, it's just, uh, it's again, it's crazy just to, to exist at all as deep as that sounds, but I've lost seven, um, very good friends over the years to accidents and suicides. So I understand, um, you know, dark times. I've, 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 I've appreciated, you know, and been through, um, you know, depressive states after losing some of my closest friends. Um, I talked to so many people who struggle with anxiety of different stripes and types. So no one has it figured out. And, you know, we're talking about really powerful people. Um, yeah. I've uh, had lunch uh, with the president of Iceland, the billionaires on down to... Um, the homeless here in Denver and, and everyone in between. And it's, we're all just people, people yeah. doing the best we can in this world. And I think it's important to, to do um, everything you can to, to be a giver and a connector. Yeah. And I was in the, I, I can't remember how many episodes ago this was, but uh, we had Bob Eskew on the show, who's a really good friend of mine. And he started um, ASD companies um, which is all access management control. So if yeah. you if you if you walk into a, a, a room and you have to swipe a key card, he invented that company, wow. and he just sold it. And we were at my final percent uh, retreat with all kind of like my mastermind, my my group of people, and we were up in Vale, and he was there, and he just heard the conversation that we were having. Sure. And I mean, this is I mean, he's probably sixty five, and he comes over and he just starts joining the conversation. And we're a bunch of we're a bunch uh, of thirty year olds at the time, yeah. and it was it, no age mattered, no means mattered, no who's your family mattered. Mm. It was just man, you guys are talking about really interesting things. And we just had him on the uh, um, on the podcast, and I asked him at the end of the podcast, I said, "Can you just give me one takeaway that you think everybody should know?" And he says, "You know, I think the world needs to love people and use things, and stop loving things and using people." I love that. And I went, <laughs> "It's awesome. it was it was such a mic drop, man. <laughs> yeah. It was such I and I I even said it. I, we were graduating, um, we were graduating fifty kids uh, that night mm -hmm. from my my school that I own in Boulder, Colorado, and I even I even used that to end the speech because I think that in this world of Instagram and things and likes, um, we're, we're losing touch with what we're supposed to love. And I think that uh, one of the things that I have really been focusing on is really trying to understand and drill down on the difference between pleasure versus happiness. Right. And I think a lot of people don't understand, they haven't truly understood happiness. And so they're trying to find all the pleasurable things in life like a car or a big house or status or followers or 
likes, whatever it is, and they're trying to put that in whatever hole they have for happiness. That's right. But they don't understand that happiness. It was so. I'll, I'll kind of give you the a big epiphany that I came to the other day is understanding that Amazon was the world's second trillion dollar company, and understanding how much money Bill or uh, uh, Jeff Bezos actually had. And at the entrepreneur inside of me goes. I want to make that big of a difference. I want to make that much of an impact. I want to have that much money. I want to, I want to become the person who can generate that much money. But then I read um, the whole article about him getting a divorce. And I realized that him focusing so much on Amazon and building that and becoming the person who could make that difference cost him his marriage. And then just like magic, like God's just kind of knocking on my heart, showing me the way. Like magic, Kayla walks into the room, asks me if I wanted a drink or something to eat. And looking her in the face, I at that moment realized that I was a richer man than Jeff Bezos. Amen. Because I can look at my wife and I know that I'm good. Now that's happiness. Yes. You know what I mean? And that's the thing. I don't. Like, I love the analogy. If you have a mega yacht and you have the planes and you have this and no one to share it with, do you care? No. And the answer is no. Well, and it's, it's, it's fascinating, right? So often in life, uh, especially when we're bombarded with social media, which is primarily the, the absolute best or the worst of someone's life, they're either yeah. on vacation in Hawaii or <laughs> their aunt got in a car accident. So either way, it's not going to make you feel that great if you're in the business of comparing yourself to others so compare yourself to um only yourself Mm -hmm. um and then also i just think there's this trend where people won't give themselves permission to be happy until they have this amount in the bank they've married this person they have the kids they've got the puppy whatever else it may be yeah that's always going to be a losing game you've really got to love what is or you're never going to love what is you know I found I was I was looking at it and so many times I think that the the country is founded on something that is a little misleading they say life liberty and the pursuit of happiness and if you look up the word pursue it means to catch something that al- already exists and if you look at that idea it's it's helping people understand that hey you're going to be in the uh the pursuit and the chase and happiness is is already a place you just got to get there. And I think that we need to change the word pursue to the word insu because the word insu means that it's a direct result of an action. And the best way to create the, or predict the future is to create it. Right. And I think that's what we have to help the young people understand is your happiness will insu if you do this. Stop pursuing anything Maybe the pursuit of more knowledge. I like that. But I really think we have to change that whole way of thinking from pursue to insu because that's that's what building North Star was. It ensued because you guys never stopped and you you saw opportunities and you built and, and you took action and you learned. It's this sitting on an entire floor of a building in downtown Denver, this is something that ensued. Because 10 years ago, you guys weren't sitting around a table saying, how can we get to the 35th floor of downtown Denver? Right. No, you said, man, how can we change some lives? How can we make a difference? How can we do right by our partners? How can we invest more, do more, have more? How can we be more? That's right. And that's the big thing is like, I always tell people like, if you're going to look at it, it's human being. Not human doing, not human having. That's right. You've got to be someone. It, it, it's, it's amazing because there's so many, I call it you know, opportunity overwhelm for any of us. Mm-hmm. But it's taking it one step at a time, processing it bit by bit, and mm-hmm. enjoying the, the process and the journey. And it's like when I look back, and you're, there's certainly m- countless you know, millions of mistakes made over the years mm-hmm. through myself and others where you, you learn. Mm. And I wouldn't change a single experience for anything because it's, it's, it's sharpened that sword. Yeah. And I will tell anyone just going through, you know, the valley, like just keep on refining and then pick constants that you can start improving. There are certain things, like I've got a very minimalist side, but I mm-hmm. you spend money on, there's the things you spend money on that are important, like your bed. 
Yeah. You need to get good sleep. You know, yeah. the, the chair at your office. Yeah. Right. Um, healthy foods, microgreens, you know, gut health. Th- those little things all sort of play in mm. to um, you just operating at the best level. So you've got to put the odds in your favor. Yeah. Don't be too hard on yourself. Um, and also just, just remember that everyone is, is going through their own trials, triumphs, tribulations, and everything in between. And so, you know, love is really the most powerful thing. We're all brothers yeah. and sisters. We're more alike than we are different. And I think when you're always out there just trying to, hey, listen, be, mm-hmm. be curious. The best way to be interesting is to be interested. Mm-hmm. And just talk to as many people as you can. Hear their stories. Start connecting the dots. Make introductions. And, um, you know, there's so many different ways you can take that regardless of what career trajectory you want it to mm-hmm. be like. And, and, and I'll just say, like, one thing in life you've just got to try stuff i mean if someone came to me um you know a decade plus ago with a prototype for croc shoes and said i'm going to make a billion dollars with these little rubber things you know these little crocs <laughs> rubber shoes <laughs> they're they're made of the same thing that hot tub pillows are made out of okay um you don't <laughs> know unless you try and you, and you the only way i mean no one knows you, you see if it's going to resonate with the marketplace and Everything is easier than it's ever been before. I mean, as we all know, with the speed yeah. of e-commerce, the ability to target market, and you can take it so many directions, whether it's for-profit or non-profit or some mm. combination of the two. Yeah, exactly right. And I mean, at the at the end of the day, it's just what what difference did you make? Yeah. And and that's I have this this kind of long speech that I'll talk to kids about, just kind of going over the story of Win- Winston Churchill with his assistant saying, "Was this your best work?" and uh, when I really kind of turned a corner in my life, I had this whole idea of, I want to wake up with a purpose. So I want to, I want, I need somewhere to go. I I want to wake up with a purpose and whether it's, uh, my purpose is to go read a book, whether it's to love my wife, whether it's, I I just need to wake up and not go, Hmm, I wonder what I'm going to do today. Like that's just not inside of me. I don't know what that's like, but more importantly, and this is where kind of the idea germinated from the final percent is when I go to sleep I, when I put my head on the pillow I want to truly feel accomplished and I think humans are getting addicted to the idea of being active and looking active but they're not accomplishing anything right, right. and so w- what I did is I had a pillowcase that I took into Joanne's fabric um, and uh, asked them hey can you do embroidery for me and they, of course, looked at me like I was insane because they said, well, if you want to knit it, it's beyond me. And they gave me the idea, well, if you go to one of those hat shops in a mall, they can kind of embroider anything for you. So I took my pillowcase into the mall and I said, can you just put on the side of my pillowcase, was this your best work? And so I did that for the first probably two and a half, three years of me just having nothing, being scared of eviction, my phone's turned off, eating ramen noodles, but every single time I would put my head down on the pillow and I'm signing my day back to God saying, hey, you know what, I know I don't have another one of these, well, I don't know I have another one of these, but I don't get this day again. Right. I want to truly put my head down on my pillow and use my head laying down on my pillow as a signature of saying, this was my best work. Gosh, do I love that, man. And, and that's what we've got to do. Yeah, that's huge. It, re- it reminds me too, man, which is, you know, uh, some people get discouraged when everyone else is operating at such a high level. And mm. sometimes, you know, 100% in one day is, is, is not, you know, equivalent to 100% the week before. But you you keep on showing up. Exactly. And, and always keep an open mind because oh, yeah. there are, I call them spontaneous collisions. And let's just imagine that you're Mark Zuckerberg and... You know, you're waking up, and you just never know. Is this the day that you get your Facebook idea? Mm -hmm. But if you're not open to that sort of stuff, it'll never happen. And also, um, some people, you know, are so brilliant um, that they think of every reason why something's not going to work. What happens, you know, instead of thinking what's the worst that can happen, what's the best that can happen, come to terms with worst-case scenario. Mm -hmm. It's, It's, I mean, you can usually go hang out with your mom and eat Fruit Loops on our couch if things get bad, which really <laughs> isn't that bad. My mom would actually really enjoy me going right. and hanging out with her <laughs> eating Fruit Loops on her couch. So, <laughs> But 
But, you know, and it's funny, though, as um, some comedians have alluded to in a sarcastic way, you know, it's, it's like everything's better than it's ever been. We live in the most exciting times, and yet um, people are still struggling out there, and it's because our psyches are getting hacked. So protect yourself. Stay mm-hmm. focused, you know, on your journey. Mm-hmm. Don't compare yourself to anyone else. There is so much abundance out there and yeah. so many different ways to take it. But also remember that even Jeff Bezos... Or Bill Gates will never realize their full potential. Yeah, they've all made mistakes. They could have each been astronomically more wealthy had they played the cards a little. There's no way that you can ever reach that exactly benchmark. Right. So you've got to just enjoy the dance. And and that's the and that's the big kind of thing that is going on right now is when you say was this your best work? You know, Jeff's Jeff Bezos's best work is creating Amazon and doing that. that his best work isn't being a husband. We just learned that, right. and it's just okay. Where where are you gonna do? Where are you gonna put your priority? And one of the things that my wife and I practice, uh, shout out Kayla, you're the best. Um, and uh, one thing we practice is if we have to say no to the other person, we have to be a- also be able to verbally say the words. Right now, you're not the priority, and if you have to say that out loud to your wife, whatever you're doing, better be dang important. And that's the big thing. So if you're looking at your business, hey, someone calls you to put out a fire at your business. Hey, you know, I can't come in right now. And and just say to yourself, right now, you're not the priority. Right now, that's not the priority. And then if you're in the middle of Game of Thrones, then say to yourself, right now, this is my priority. Does that make sense? (laughs) It doesn't make sense. It's insane. You know, it's it's that's the big thing that I think. And then going back to the best work idea is. The best work that you have is in that moment. And I always tell my nephew, who's 18, is, is look, man, you, I don't want you to think about where you're going to be when you're 21, where you've been. Um, my nephew, unfortunately, was in the Aurora Theater shooting. That's one of the reasons mm. he lives with me. Mm. And uh, he's still processing that kind of memory. Uh, of course. And so he's going through all of these things. And one thing that I tell him is I say, look, Whatever moment you're in right now is the most important moment of your life. So whether you're taking out the trash, whether you're cooking dinner, whether you're debating, whether you're trying to uh, buy a car, I don't care what it is. Whatever's right in front of you, that is the most important moment of your life. Because you never, like me just saying those words, it's already gone. We're in a new moment now. And so you have to, and that's why I love, you, you couldn't help but say, Stay present, be, have hyper presence and be in the now. And I think so many people get caught up in where they think they're going to go and then life throws them a curveball and they're surprised. No, life is actively thinking up bigger and crazier curveballs to throw you. So all you can do is your very best in that moment. And it's not even that day. It's not, it's, it's that, that very second. Are you there? Are you connecting? And, and one of the things that's a funny story with me and my wife is, is I have, anytime I'm going to go into a conversation with someone, I've always said something because it puts me in the right mindset. I will look at someone and in my mind, I won't say it out loud. I'll say, you have never met anyone like me and I'm going to change your life because I want to be in that mode if I'm going to connect with someone. Here's the problem, man. When, <laughs> when I met my wife, she had me so nervous because she's the most beautiful being on the planet. <laughs> She sits down, and we're, we're looking at each other, and I, I look at her, and I go, you've never met anyone like me, and I'm going to change your life. And she started laughing at me, and I was, what did I just say? I cannot <laughs> <Out> believe. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I cannot believe I just said that. And she, she absolutely was laughing that time. I was probably crazy to her, but it's so funny. If you ask her about that story now, she says, nothing could have been more true. Wow. And that's, that's, you want to put yourself in the best possible position to succeed. Right. And that's what you can do every single day in every relationship, interaction. And that's why I can't tell you how many times I have had my life absolutely change because I didn't have an agenda, because I was just there. That's what it's all about. And that's, that's what it's all about. I think it's, it's the only way authentic connection can happen. If Agreed. it's someone... Is all you know, aiming for someone or something, um, you know, back end motivations, mm-hmm. money, et cetera. It just takes away from the potential authentic nature of that relationship. Absolutely. Um, and I think just, uh, you know, 
my, my other big thing in life is to, to be a learner and not a judger. There's mm. this book called Change Your Questions, Change Your Life that really speaks to that so well. But, you know, meet anyone and everyone where they are. I mean, if, if you or I were born there in their circumstances at that place and time, we would be that person. Mm -hmm. And not none of us are any better than anyone else. We're Absolutely. all just doing the best we can. So we've got to share what we learn. And, and um, none of us have the answers. Mm -hmm. We're just sharing our unique perspectives at the Absolutely. end of the day. Um, but then also understanding the upside of stress. We've been yeah. programmed forever that it's a negative thing. There's a book called The Upside of Stress that I highly recommend um, that just really reprograms you in the healthiest way. And we all think about those moments mm -hmm. where you enter the gun and you turn out your best work. Oh, that's how yeah. diamonds made. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just, uh, you know, not being so hard on yourself, enjoying the journey and, you know, focusing like a laser on those things that are important to you. But Absolutely. again, so many people are living someone else's life. They've never really oh, taken the time just to figure out why am I here? What do I want to focus on? And it could be loving on each and every person that life and puts before you, regardless of whether you're the best barista in town or you're the coolest janitor at the office mm -hmm. building or you're running, um, you know, Amazon at the end of the day and just meet anyone, everyone where you can. But you also have to protect your time strategically so you can actually get things done. So oh, it's absolutely. A, it's, a, it's a balancing act, for sure. Really, yeah, it's, it's really a balancing is. act, and, and you want you want to love people, and, and, and I think one of the things that people forget about is if you want to love people, a lot of times you forget that you also, whether you like it or not, want to be loved on. And right. so the problem that will happen is if you get into this hyper-help and hyper love for all of these people, you start doing it for the wrong reasons because you're trying to plant seeds of, I did this for you, now can you give me a hug? Because I really need one. Tick for tack. Yeah, and I think that we really need to get, get into that give-give mentality, not give and take. We're taught from a very early age, everything's give and take. If I'm going to do this for you, what are you going to do for me? Um, the teacher says, if you are quiet right now, I will give you a cookie. The, 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 everything in your entire life is, is you're the follower and it's give and take. And I think the real power is we learn to take the wrong things. Maybe the thing that you take and you have that just touches your heart and changes your life is the fact that you change someone else's. If we could get into that, I mean, then, I mean, think about it. I've got 10 billion people watching my back. I no longer have to watch my back if that's the culture. Amen. It, it reminds me of one other thing, Greg, that you so well said. It, life is pretty boring when it's all about you, yeah. you know, and it's, um, you know, I've, I've gone through phases where, you know, in startup mode, put every dollar I, I had into my company and I was, you know, getting peanut butter and jelly for my girlfriend at the time, like surviving, right? So like I, I get that end of it. And I've also experienced and had, um, you know, just about everything I could have ever imagined, but mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter. It's, um, it's getting back to the core of where your heart is um, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, connecting with other people. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about is those relational connections. And you don't know, we're all a layer removed from magic. Never forget it. <laughs> and, um, that. you know, it's, uh, it's a very small world. It's getting smaller by the moment. Yeah. Um, but, uh, it's, it's, I think it's a very exciting time to be alive. Look at the technology we're seeing mm. today. Oh yeah. I mean, next time, you know, we're doing this a few years from now or whatever. Imagine what the technology is going to be like. Oh, it's, then. It's, and it's, it's, so it's exponential right now. All right. Well, so we're 33 minutes into this. What is the big takeaway that you would like to have everyone get from something Kyle Henderson wants to sow into your life? What's the big takeaway that you'd just like to, but it could be something completely new that we haven't talked about. It could be something we've already said. What's the, but if there's one thing, what do you want to make sure that everybody takes away from this podcast? Yeah, I think it comes back to life's urgency and the fact that we're, we're all born with that terminal disease called being born, you know, so none of us are, <laughs> getting out of here alive. And I think there's something incredibly beautiful about that. Um, and, you know, it's it's such a miracle to be here at all. So mm. don't be so hard on yourself. You don't have to be a Mark Zuckerberg to be happy. No. Um, you know, it's, it's really about finding your thing. And your thing may be 
you know, playing Fortnite for an hour, you know, once a day and then, you know, painting with your kids and figure out what your thing is. Stop yeah. comparing yourself to anyone and everyone else. Figure out what you're about. And what's really cool is when you own that, people come around you. I remember uh, just, you know, in high school, the guy with the old piece of crap car that he loved. Everyone loved that car. And then you had the other kid who was given a new car that he couldn't stand and everyone else could You know, it's just you create your own reality. Yeah. And if you just live your life with confidence and, you know, the miracle that you are, magic already, starts to the happen. The miracle that you already are. Yeah. And stop, you know, for me, it's um, a lot of thoughts are bait underlying you know many emotions so we grab at them and what i what i mean by that is you know thoughts are endless distractions be present Mm. you know that's what it's all about a lot of our thoughts aren't really that constructive at the end of the day if you need to dive deep and be strategic get out a pad of paper but focus exclusively on what it is you're doing Mm -hmm. without distraction amen on that all right well thank you very much kyle i really appreciate you coming on to the show yeah amen thank you for having me This has been the Final Percent Podcast with Kyle, the man, Henderson. Kyle, Mr. Presence, Henderson. Thank you so much, Kyle. We really, really appreciate it. Good job, man.